Hi everybody, welcome to Sharon's Home and Garden Channel. So it's a beautiful sunny morning and it's not going to stay that way for long. Um, I just, I was sitting inside having a cup of coffee and looked at the radar and there's a bunch of rain coming. So there's a few things I want to get done today. The greenhouse behind me, I need to do a little bit of a clean out in the greenhouse because I want to put some of my pots in there that have my peppers. Um, I don't know what else I'll be able to fit in there, but I want to bring some plants into the greenhouse that normally like a little warmer weather because it's been getting pretty cool here. So come along and join me for this greenhouse clean out. So my greenhouse isn't too bad. Um, it kind of becomes a catch-all in the summertime because it's just a convenient place to put stuff. But the first thing I need to do is take off the shade cloth. We no longer need this. So let's get that done. So I use these binder clips to hold my fabric on. And I have to tell you, they worked really well. Um, I have boxes and boxes of these at work. <laughs> but you can get them at the dollar stores. I think you get 10 of them for a dollar, something like that. Um, we purged our files at work a couple years ago. And there were just, I literally have boxes this big full of binder clips. So. I just put them on the gutters here to hold this down and it did a fantastic job. I never had to go back and put one back on so that worked out really well. Um, and we've had some pretty bad wind storms here. As a matter of fact just this week we had a tornado headed right for us. It was an interesting evening and uh, fortunately it dissipated before it got here but it was pretty close. It was like five miles away so that's pretty close so everything held up and um, I was just very pleased with these binder clips and how well they did Let's talk about the performance of this shade cloth. I bought this shade cloth at Home Depot. I had to buy it online because I don't have it in my store, but they had it to my store very quickly. It was about, I don't remember now. I'll put the price down here. It was like 20 or $30. Maybe it was closer to $30. It was a 10 foot by 20, no, 6 foot by 20 foot section. And um, basically I bought it to cool down my greenhouse. Because in the summer it gets really hot in there. And you can't store anything in there. Like even my seed trays and everything end up melting in my greenhouse. So not melting completely, but they get all warped and everything. So that's why I decided to do a shade cloth. Now this particular shade cloth is a 50% shade cloth. Um, I could probably go more than that, but I can tell you that um, my fuchsia plant that I had in there for a while before it got too hot um, really liked this 50% shade cloth. So this performed very well. Hopefully, I mean, I don't see any UV damage on it as I look at it, it feels exactly like it did before I put it on the greenhouse. So I'm very pleased with it. Um, and hopefully I will get many more years use out of this shake block. There you go, 
that'll store really well in my shed over the winter. So my spider plant has been enjoying the summer outside. It was really looking very sickly in the house and needs to be trimmed and stuff. But it looks much better now. <laughs> um, I put it in here because it was getting pretty cold outside. We had uh, some lows in the low 40s. So I think that's a little bit too cold for a tropical plant. But it seems to be happy. But I think it's time to bring it inside. What I will do is remove the top like that much dirt here. Replace it with some clean dirt and wipe off the pot really well and then I can take it on inside. Any liquid fertilizers or pest control or disease control that I have outside have to come in during the winter. I can't even keep them in my garage because if it gets, I think if it gets below five, below zero, then it freezes in my garage. But I move all of these into um, my grow room downstairs and that way I know that they stay safe over the winter time because I don't think you want this stuff to freeze so I'm going to take it downstairs. There we go. Another thing I put inside is any kind of sprayers that I have. I have this bigger sprayer and this little sprayer. And I found that if I leave them outside in the winter time, they do not work the next year. So these go inside as well. Tags. As a gardener, we have tags everywhere. But these particular tags are for some perennials that I planted. So I have my trumpet vine, my clematis here. And what is this? Zing Rose Dianthus. So these particular tags I will keep and I'll put them, I have a folder with all my tags in it and I will keep these and put them in my folder. So if I ever need to look back and see something about that plant, um, I can look back and know exactly which plants I planted. So any of this kind of stuff, I put out in my shed over the winter. Um, it seems to do just fine. However, anything that I think I'm gonna need for the spring, uh, for my seedlings, like earthworm castings, I bring inside because you never know if you can get the shed door open. <laughs> it's usually um, buried in snow, so sometimes it takes a while, like till April, before I can get the shed door open. So anything I think I'm going to need, I take downstairs in my grow room but anything else gets stored in the shed. So in this container, I have anything that can go in the compost pile. Um, some of this used dirt, I put some of it in the compost pile and then like from my big bins I will put that in my raised beds because my raised beds settle over time so I amend my raised beds with that soil and then compost. But for now this goes in the compost pile.
bottles. I don't drink a lot of soda anymore. I don't drink hardly any soda anymore. But I have people collect these for me and I use them in my garden. I'll show a picture of where I use them to show where the root of the plant is. And I cut off the bottom here and then save them. So I had a few extras this year. But that worked really well this year. That was another thing that worked really well. You can see around the edge of my greenhouse, these violets have grown. When I put this ground fabric down, I didn't lift up the greenhouse because I've got it anchored on the outside and I've got stakes all along the inside. So I am just going to go through here and pull all of these violets. That looks better, doesn't it? They'll come back because I wasn't able to get them all, but at least I won't have to look at their dead bodies over the winter. So while we are here, let's talk about this ground cover. Um, I am so impressed with this ground cover. Now a friend of mine got some and it's got a fuzzy side and this kind of a side, which is plasticky. I don't know what it's made out of, but it just stops the weeds. And when I do my cleanup in the other part of the garden, I'll show you, but I didn't have to pull one weed the whole summer long. And I had a huge garden. So this is well worth the price. Um, I'll put a link to it down below. This is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money, but I will definitely buy this again. Um, I've got quite a bit left on this row. I did my whole garden, plus I did in here, and I did in my raised beds, and I've still got quite a bit left. So this row lasted me all summer long. I give it a big thumbs up. Every once in a while I find one of these on the floor and I have to do a hunt to find out where it came from. For the most part, this greenhouse, I think this is my third year with this greenhouse. I have to look back and find out. But for the most part, this has been a very stable greenhouse. Um, we get some howling winds through here in the winter time and even though I have it tied down there's a tie that goes across posts dug in the ground um, it just doesn't move you can tell it gets shook because these come loose but even with the hail that we've had over the summer and the pounding rain and the wind and then the wind all winter this past winter was very windy um, it really has held up well. Now it has a guarantee for five years and I will put the name of it here. I believe it's a Palram. That's how you say it. Greenhouse, I bought it on Amazon. I bought it um, after Christmas, so I got a really good deal on it. If I would do it again, I would get a bigger one. If I would do it again, I would move it to a different part of the yard because this greenhouse does not get sun in the depth of winter my house shade but um, and the sun is just too low in the horizon to even get above that my lowest roof line on my house so but yeah every once in a while I find one of these and then I have to go find where it came from I can't see it right off the bat <laughs> Macy are you inspecting does this meet with your approval? Huh? Does that meet with your approval? Now comes the fun part. <laughs> 
<laughs> I have to lift those buckets in here. Well, look what I found while I was out digging in the garden. A glass marble. I thought that was cool. This is jalapenos. These are my ornamentals plus my pusa joala. You can see I've got one ripe one there ready to be picked. And I picked this pepper plant because it actually had fruit on it. This one is um, red marconi here. I think that's all that's in here. So we'll let this one get ripen up here. And then of course I've got these beautiful marigolds in here. And it smells so good in here. It smells like marigolds. So I also brought in this plant. Sorry, the dogs are making a noise. This is a perennial flower. I need to plant it somewhere. But for now I want it protected. Uh, brought in my rosemary. I've got a couple more. I just have to find where I put them. And then on the other side here, this is how I store my vegetables. They do go bad eventually, but they don't go bad as fast if, as if I would have them in the refrigerator. They go bad in the refrigerator, so I store them in here. Um, this is my poor aloe plant. I've left it in here and forgot to water it. So he is going to get trimmed up and go back in the house. Oh, look at this poor little owl. You've seen better days. We'll have to fluff up your fur. <laughs> uh, I brought in some birdhouse gourds. The big huge mammoth one is here. This, these ones, this is what happened to my birdhouse gourds. So I do have some more sitting on a bench outside, but they've all got the spots on them. I have to look and find out if that's normal or not. And this is some delicata. This is called Jester, and this is just a delicata that I'm storing here. So it feels really good to get this done. I might have been thinking about it for a while and I finally got it done. Um, we're supposed to get some days in the 60s this week. I think tomorrow is supposed to be in the low 60s. So it'll be warm in here. The pepper should like it. I'm going to give all these plants a good shot of fish fertilizer and really get them fertilized well. And because um, they're looking a little peaked little light green so I really want to green up the leaves a little bit um, but yeah the nice thing is then these pots will be here for the spring once the Sun hits the greenhouse in the spring I plant kale and radishes and carrots and all that kind of stuff so thanks so much for joining me for this greenhouse clean out and um, I hope to see you next time happy gardening everybody bye bye